Timely. Okay, so um, we just chatted about um, this document about modules that use the M2 E key standard uh, to create plug and play um, like brain modules, mic controllers uh, to add on to breakouts or dev boards. So you've got uh, the SIPI, you know, AI accelerator. You've got um, SparkFun. Looks like they've got their Bluetooth chipset. Particle has a cellular module. Um, this is uh, Baker Diary has an NRF52840. Google has the Coral Accelerator. These are all plug-in boards that use the M.2 standard, um, which you might be familiar with if you have a laptop, because um, when you want to add Wi-Fi or cellular or like SSD disk space, um, you often do it over the M.2 connector. Um, and there's different. It's interesting. It's just like just like every standard. It's a standard, except when it's not a standard, right? So uh, when you go over to Wikipedia. Um, you can read all about it. And the thing to watch for is the keying. So there's different slots. Like if you remember like ISA card or PCI cards, there's slots that kind of tell you, you know, what connector, like what it can fit into. And if it doesn't mechanically fit, it's not gonna electrically match. And so they try to use the mechanical connection to keep you from having incompatible things plugged in. So um, if you look at um, the, M2 boards here, you actually see they all kind of have the same like notch over here and um, Baker Diary even wrote E above it, which is very handy. So these are all E uh, notch connectors. Oops, sorry. And um, that key ID, you can see like, oh, there's like ones that are like, oh, these are designed for, you know, PCIe and there's ones that are designed for like, I guess, SATA or audio and USB, but E key, um, has UART, SDIO, I squared C, USB, and PCM, which is actually kind of makes sense for a module. Do you yeah. know how many M.2 devices can be plugged into a single bus? I mean, I think it's designed for only one. Yeah, I haven't seen any examples. Um, just, you know, one quick thing. This is like, you know, the particle folks made this, this uh, is their M.2, and then it has, you know, feathers because they use the feather format, so. Yeah, because the, 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 the M2 has like 70 pins on it, so it's like, it's very easy to like break it out into multiple, and this is their, yeah. their canned feathering that I was like, Anyways, hey, as, as we explore this format, yeah. we will let you know what we find out. Um, okay, so um, the key ID is something you're gonna watch for, but we're looking for key ID E. And so, um, one thing, I tried when I first went to because I was like, well, let's find this connector. Is I tried searching for M2 connector and that was actually a mistake <laughs> because um, there's actually like way too many things here. What you actually want, and I was like, I couldn't, I was like, well, is it like a rectangular connector? Like kinda, is it a terminal block or cartage connector? Like it's kind of like a cartage connector, right? Um, and it was actually a little, I mean, yeah, it turns out it was cartage, but um, it was a little, weird to find out what it was. And then I realized um, when I went over to TE site that these are called M2 NGFF for new generation form factor. So what you want to search for is uh, M2 NGFF. Um, and then you'll actually see, okay, yeah, card edge because it's the only one that has like more than a few connectors. Um, You'll see, of course, you can also get uh, disk drives, right? That's a normal thing. Normally, uh, you would get a disk drive maybe or SSD drive on an M2 uh, form factor. We want the connector. Okay, so I ended up over here, and as normal, I looked for active and normally stocking because maybe I want to make an adapter or breakout for this. And then um, I wanted a surface mount, you know, surface mount at right angle, and I want through hole. I think that would be tough to, to use in uh, equipment. And this is where I actually got, uh, again, I got a little stuck, because I was like, oh no, there's like all these variations, but like, what's the difference? Um, like, that one has like an A on it. Does that mean it gets A key? And then like, is this a little different? And then this is B, is it a B key? Like, it was, you know, uh, a little confusing. And then um, I noticed that they're all kind of the same part number, 219, 9119 and then there's a dash and then a number um, and so I tried uh, downloading the data sheet and yeah there's like this the key and the thing it's like it means something so for um, e key I want dash four you can see here I want like one dash one or like dash four so 
I did end up going to the, the TE website because I thought this was a little bit more uh, clearer because they actually quite nicely show you um, the height. Like, here's what the differences are. So if you're going to get 4.2 millimeters high, that's without a one dash. And if you want it like a low, like closer to the PCB 3.2 millimeters high, um, that would be a one dash. And then you can search... Uh, you can see here they also see key A, key M, key B, key E, you know, and then finally you get to key E. That's the one I want. Key E yeah, is I, this I, part number. I'm going to say that for the maker companies that are thinking about using this, we really all need to decide because there is a lot of different types. and Yeah, and what's weird is that, that like dash six is the one, is also, it's also valid. Yeah, it's, there's, and you know, 22 yeah. millimeters wide, great, but then there's where the, you know, the, the keying is. Um, you know, if, if we make something, we'll, we'll get it, we'll try our best to get everyone together, at least on an email or something. We have this repo, uh, but as you can see, I, uh, we didn't really plan this uh, video to uh, kind of confirm that uh, worry, but boy, um, if you're trying to make a product, Look at, yeah. all the, look at all these choices. So when you, when you buy these, one thing I'll definitely say is like, watch out because it's so easy to get the one with the wrong keying and the photo, I, I would not necessarily go by the photo. Um, one, because, you know, photos are sometimes generic, um, but also they don't, like, if you don't have it in front of you, also, like, you're not going to count the number of pads, right? Yeah, Trevor just ordered the C841659 part from LCSC. Yeah. Hope it will work for this. Yeah. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, you know, for connectors, I would recommend, you know, like, you can always get it from DigiKey and they have 10,000 in stock. Um, one thing I've noticed about LCSC is sometimes they, they go out of stock. I've, I've been bit by that a little bit, but it's good. So it's good to have a, a guaranteed supplier. Um, okay. So this one is going to be the E type and there's some cool stuff. So you'll see that there has been like a, a refresh design, um, for, um, uh, for DigiKey's site. Yeah. And there's a couple cool things. So one, there's a 3d PDF, which I downloaded. And um, it actually like works, like it's like a 3D model. And this is actually kind of cool because you can see the contacts and the little notch where um, your yeah. PC we, PCB would fly into. And you can also see the, the bosses. So this is where the locating dots. So you'll need to have those on your PCB as well. So this is kind of neat. I don't know if you can do different shading effects. I've never, I've never, used this before this is kind of cool you know a million years ago when i was at make we released the first pdf via podcast and itunes with the 3d model in it yeah this was kind of over cool. 10 years ago yeah um and uh i always thought that 3d and pdf because we're stuck with the pdf format and so there's a lot of things that you can do with the PDF, pdf format um like put in these 3d models that, that's helpful because there's a lot of different ways to render and look at these things there are web viewers and there's other ways to do it. They also have, um, you know, the footprints and downloadable things uh, for a lot of folks. But I think this is going to be helpful for other people. The other thing is you can actually kind of see it has an E embossed on it. I don't know if I can get these. It's tough to see with this this lighting. I don't know if I can get it to vi visualize it. But there's like a little E. You know, if I move it around, you can read it. There's a little E on the, on the yeah. marking. So I guess, yeah, the E is what tells you it's an E key. Um, okay, and then next up, I don't think that was nifty, is um, they now have a link to um, Snap EDA, which I don't think was there before. Um, so what's cool is you can download, and I'm, I'm logged in, but when you go here, um, it'll actually have the CAD file with the footprint and the pinout. Now, it's not the most beautiful of all, you know, in, in, uh, drawings. I mean, they, you know, it's it's going to be very bare bones. It's not going to be, you know, if you're using a particular pin out, like you want pin one to be named ground, it's not going to have that. It's going to be called pin one. So you might want to take this and adapt it to have the pin names match the module you're using. So instead of being like, what's the URP RX pin? Oh, it's 19. And then like finding it, you can adapt it, but you can download um, the format and you can download it in Eagle or ORCAD or Altium or whatever, so I use Eagle CAD, and you can open it, and there's a little instruction. And when you open it in Eagle CAD, um, you you'll see the footprint. 
And this is actually really nice because uh, this part is what is annoying to make, is like the, the, the pads all perfectly lined up um, and the, the correct sized boss holes. And I like that there's even a center point. So that's kind of handy so that the pick and place knows where to, to pick it up safely. So this, yeah. is, um, this is pretty cool. So some, some nifty new things. I think connectors especially, um, and, and TE connectors, you're, you'll have a, a good experience with them. I've always, I've always had good luck with TE connectors. Um, they're you know, high quality, they don't break, they're, they're reliable. Um, and these are clearly designed to like be used in stuff like laptops and backplanes and like high reliability um, need products. Like they're not gonna be used in disposable electronics because most disposable electronics don't use M2 connectors. So that's it. So if you want to use M2 modules, you want to add these to your board design, pick up TE21991191-4. That's my recommendation. Uh, it should fit with these modules quite nicely. Um, do you think people say M.2 or do you think they say M2? I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say M2. Someone will, will actually. And then uh, someone said, uh, is the name of the thing boss holes? Yeah, that's the name. Yeah, they're, I call them, a, you know, they're, they're bosses, and you have a hole for the, the bosses, so they're yeah. boss holes. A lot of people call know. their manager boss hole. So. <laughs> no, know. they do. They don't know it. And, and they're orientation bosses, orientation holes. I mean, there's something that basically keeps the mechanical. You know, it's like donut holes. Let's just stick with boss holes. Boss holes? Yeah. Yeah. Donut right. holes, you know, they're not actually donut holes. I they're made know. in a separate process. They're not like the leftover... Yeah, I don't know. Donut centers. You'd think they are, but they're not. They're made. They're made actually totally separately. Yeah. The more you know. It's all lies. Okay. okay. That's the uh, great search. Think of all the things you learned today. All right, and thank you so much, Digikey and Lady Ada, for doing the research. Yes. Where in the world is